Again, I am standing up. I'm not sitting down on a chair. What I just did was just with my legs. Wow. Right. I I just can't imagine being that supple anymore, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, if I did that, you'd just... Yeah. Every step of the way. <laughs> I'd get halfway like, down and go... <laughs> and then not be able to get back again. Like, like stepping on a potato chip bag. <laughs> yeah, it was, that's the noise. That's right. Okay, I have a uh, structure. It's cool. New DLC has got released. Um, Thrones of Decay, aka Thrones of Delay. It got delayed a couple of uh, a bits. Just was supposed to be in the release like last year. With our promised uh, world of three DLC releases in one year. Mm, I remember that. And technically, we have had that now. So technically, no. Chaos yeah, well, I mean, like, a tiny bit earlier. Well, well, now we've had three. So, um, because, you know, it was divided into three, uh, the new, uh, bit, the uh, new selling mo model. Technically. Great. So that's it. The <laughs> best kind of like correct. <laughs> the best kind of correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's had some positive reviews. Um, we even know that in some regions it's been doing really well. And um, how did you guys enjoy us? If we, we start recording... <laughs> If we start recording. I mean, I've been recording, but I just always start immediately. Yeah, I just, I'm just like, that's fine. I just, no one said let's go. I was just. We never say let's go. No, Anders always just goes like, no, I'm already recording. <laughs> just to listen to uh to our like insane ramblings about stuff. We get the good. That's the that's the sauce. It's the it's the banter. Yeah. The pre the pre the pre show banter. Yeah, at least you cut away the time I um, I started talking about the dream about the scarecrow standing in the middle of a field with no arms, just crying constantly. That was a That's weird cool. segment. It was like 30 minutes just lost. Yeah, he started crying and it was just, it was odd. A bit uncomfortable, yeah. really. Yeah, but at least um, here we are, though. Mm. Okay, so maybe Damders go first then with uh, what he thought about right. it. Uh, so, you know, re resident hater of Total War, I would say. At the last... <laughs> but this, so, um, start with the free stuff, because, you know, the fact that there is free stuff at all, <laughs> it's a miracle, but... Uh, yeah, I quite like Epidemius. I think he's like very he's very simple. Like there's not really a lot to him. The only thing is that Tallyman's ability, which is incredibly hard to stack up. But um no, I quite like him. He's quite difficult to play. But he's still fun. Wait, it's hard to stack up. Well yeah, unless you just like get five cultists at once and then like, okay, all of you spread right now. I just found that my Wait. plagues just decayed decayed <laughs> instantly. And uh oh, Epidemius with the uh, plagues. I mean um, Nur uh, Kugath and um, Tamarkan kind of survives for a bit, so they usually like have legs. Like, I didn't do anything and I got, got up to like almost the fullest, like turn 70 or something. Is that how it works? I never got that, never happened to me. I always felt like I had like one or two. Maybe I just got unlucky and all my guys got wiped out. So yeah, maybe. I, I guess, I guess maybe where I, because I stacked infections. So I ended my Epidemius campaign at like turn 140 and I had like 17,000 infections. And the only thing, and I'll get into this when we talk about Nurgle, because I've got strong strong opinions about Nurgle. Um, the only thing that was really holding me back was the cooldowns of the plagues. So I I didn't have anything less than, I want to say about 37 plagues. The counter was about 37. That's the lowest it got, and I was getting up to about 70 odd. Yeah, it's, it's a skill shot my part, then, fair. <laughs> You're slacking. Damn. I play the game. But I... I do like Epidemius, and I do think his mechanic is potentially better than Tamakart's. I agree. I think ta I, my hot take, and it might be because I played him last, I don't really like Tamakart all that much. I don't think he's bad. I just don't think I enjoyed him that much. I think he's got a bit of a naff mechanic. He's got a bit of an identity crisis as well. He feels just like Warriors of Chaos, which I get that's kind of what they were going for, but he's not Warriors of Chaos. He's Nurgle. <laughs> he can yeah. Feel like Nurgle. yeah, I mean, he is uh, Warriors of Chaos in, in all but name, for sure. Yeah, so my, I mean, my problem with Tamakan is that he, so he's, he's got, is it six heroes or five heroes? He's got six, I think. Yeah, so he's got the, he's got the Nurgle boy, he's got the Chaos Warrior boy, he's got the Vermeer, he's got the Beastman, he's got the Werewolf, Werekin, and he's got the Chaos Dwarf. Yeah. So he's got six guys, which is fine. Now the Nurgle guy, pretty good because he gives you more Rot Knights. Great. The, the Chaos Warrior fine but this is where the problem starts because initially he gives you things like aspiring champions which yep. in theory 
is good, except for the fact you don't get any of the Warrior of Chaos bonuses for them, so they're fairly mediocre. And this is kind of the problem that goes throughout Tamakan in that none of his heroes that allow you to recruit these loot units actually buff them in any meaningful way. So you kind of end up with the ability to recruit units which aren't actually that useful because basically the stuff that you can recruit is better anyway. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna do a, a little disagree here. Um, some of the stuff is so powerful you don't really need anything. Like, Aspiring Champions aren't supposed to be like the end-all be-all like you do with Archeon or Bellacor or something like that. They're supposed to be a, a unit that's just standing and helping out the front line, basically, so they can't push forward from there. Um, I, I used some of them in like different armies because they buffed their stuff a little bit. Like the Chaos Dwarf got his own army with just um, you know Dreadquakes and the and the Dark Guy and yeah, stuff the, like that. The Chaos Dwarf, I'd say, was the exception. Yeah, and then some stuff just don't need that many buffs because they don't get that many buffs. Like War Mammoths don't need it. Uh, werewolves still work really good early on because uh, they're anti-large and they get out regen and stuff like that. He also gives them horrible regen, doesn't he? Um, he does, but again, that's that's a, that's a weird ability that doesn't actually work that, that yeah, way. Yeah, it doesn't actually do anything. That's uh, that's fair, actually. It's um, um, it, it, because I've actually like yelled at the developers about this. I think horrible regen <laughs> is like uh, actually it bad. Absolutely like, listen to you. But it's like it, 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 so let's say you, you, something gets down to like twenty five percent or something, and then like on, on I think it was um, ice trolls. I said. They need to to get like the fifty percent uh, regen that they need to actually have like a new uh, dude to, uh, come back or something like that. It's like sixteen and a half minutes they have to be in combat, and it's like insane. Like it's an insane number to be like they even even have the fight in. It's so rare you ever have fights that long. Um, uh, when's the last but... time a battle lasted for sixty minutes? Never mind a single fight in the battle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have them like once a week, maybe or maybe twice a week or something. But it's it's definitely not. Or like it, often at all it tends to be sieges and stuff where units are further away rather than yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah because otherwise they just get killed anyway have you got anything else to say about sieges monsters just to, just while we're on the topic <laughs> oh don't get me fucking started on sieges okay let's uh go into the dudes first what we thought about them and then we'll go into um, like the, yeah. the, the the new grievances we'll we'll, we'll shelve the sieges for the minute but we'll come back to it hang on what about the reworks <laughs> are, they, are they first or are they after the lords? Um, what was your structure, Fred? You had a structure here. Okay, I said structure, but it was more like I just wanted to get us going. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, so, I, so I thought like, hey, I've been sitting for 10 hours. I can just talk. But <laughs> in reality, like the talking comes first and then the like planning. Um, yeah. But I was just thinking like, what did you guys think of the DLC? So we're going to do the reworks after. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so 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 Tamaka is is he's he's fine, but I just think the Epidemius had a more interesting mechanic overall. He felt more like a more useful. Okay, Epidemius uh is gonna be after this one, but I get what you're saying. I think Tamaka personally is a good adventure stomp campaign. It's not supposed to be like difficult, it's not supposed to be, you know, anything. It's just an adventure. You just go and stomp the world. That, yeah, that's it. I don't think any campaign is particularly difficult. Malachi people have had some trouble with, and Epidemius as well, thanks to uh, Malice. If you get him early, Malice is not impossible. <laughs> but um, yeah, Ma Malachi definitely for me was... Like, there were just so many people that declare war on you. Like, Stein yeah. War takes you up to Throg, and then you attack him, and then Wolfric attacks you, and then Malice attacks you, and then Epidemius attacks you, and then the rats, and then the Chaos Dwarves, and you're just like, fucking, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm just, I don't yeah, want to do my in, own in stuff. In fairness, somewhere in between there, you get grape shot on your cannons, and then everyone dies. Yeah, they spent quite a long time chasing armies around the chaos wastes. Like, yeah, just, they're desperately fleeing from me for a fucking good reason. And um, the uh, spirit of Grungi also helps you a lot early on. A lot. Yeah, the, the main problem with that campaign is, again, I mean, it's a it's a problem. It's a difficulty. With also all campaigns, it's stopping your settlements from getting sacked endlessly. Winning battles is not the problem. It's stopping your settlements from getting sacked. I mean, dwarves are very, very defensive. They do kind of, like, as long as you have a garrison there, you can just have, like, a, dro uh, a dwarf lord and some units, and it'll be fine most of the time. Uh, especially since everyone gets grape shots. It's not just Malachi's mm. uh, army. 
So you can Even usually defend yourself pretty well. Grape shot. Sorry? Even the AI gets grape shot. Yeah. They don't use it, but they get the ability. Yeah, that's cool. Good for them. <laughs> but the Malachi's um, ability, grape shot, is probably bugged. Because if you guys played Elsef, then it grape shot does not do that much damage at all. It's it's not even like in the in the same realm of um, of good. Really? I, I, did, does Elspeth get grape shot? Because I've not played Elspeth at all. I've got mm. nothing. Huh. Because Malachi's grape shot um, will basically delete units. Yeah. You even get a quest battle that is like um, the river crossing where they have to funnel in. And if you have like just a couple of grape shots, you just annihilate the entire army and you sit there cackling and you used to get like, the that person knew what they were doing. I'll tell you what, because Malachi, Malachi gets his adventures, obviously. Um, yeah. Which I quite, as a mechanic, I quite like. I think that's really nice, actually. Um, but I did the Wood Elf one. And have you done the Wood Elf one? Uh, no, I don't think so. So the Wood Elf one, the final battle is basically like, there's this there's this tree man boy, and he's like casting all the time. And it's like, oh no, as long as the enemy general's alive, reinforcements will continue to pour onto the battlefield. I'm like, well, obviously there's a solution to this problem. You nail that bastard with cannons. What they don't tell you is that as soon as the enemy general dies, the entire enemy army breaks. <laughs> so I start this battle, I'm like, cannons? Kill that jerk. And about three minutes later, the entire enemy army breaks and runs away without having... Like, I'd only shot the enemy general. They'd got nowhere near me. They were about halfway towards me before they all turned around and just broke and ran away again. I was like, well, that was pretty easy. Yeah, well, fun though. <laughs> it sounds like... <laughs> Like the, the good things are, are the things you can talk to other people about that isn't bugged or anything like that, right? I, I was just I was expecting them to be like, okay, now the reinforcements won't respawn. Now you need to deal with the surviving army rather than all they all just turn around and run away again. I was like, all right, fine. I guess Which uh, weapon is that one um, buffing? Do you remember? What's that? Which weapon does that one buff? Which um, siege weapon? Oh, flame cannons. I think I started that one. I don't know if I did it fully. It's kind of a it's kind of a pain because there's three that are quite easy to get, and there's two that you need to basically go down to Midland to get. So you need to get one of those to be the other. There's the other one is also kill Wood Elves, which you're probably not going to be anywhere near, near to Wood Elves to do that. So you basically need to go to Mount Midland to get it. So it's kind of a pain. I think the idea but, is you're probably meant to use the the great legendary grudges and use those to teleport around at the same time as doing the adventures. So it kind of works quite nicely I, together there, but. I genuinely don't know how, because a lot of those great. I look, I look at the grudges and I think, well, that's that's actually quite hard to achieve. Things like exterminate the chaos dwarfs and Grimgore, and I'm like, well, I've, by that point, I've basically won the campaign anyway. Yeah, I mean, like you're sp probably supposed to do like two red legendary grudges, something like that, and then, like I said, you're probably gonna be one anyway. Also, the grudge system. I also one of the things I don't like about it is oh, there's a few things I don't like about it. One of the things I don't like is that by exterminating your cursed kin, right, the stain on the, the dwarf sort of lineage, and killing and wiping out the greatest threat of the greenskins, you get 2,500 grudges, which is effectively nothing. Like, it doesn't even get you halfway. I just feel that's a little bit stingy. They have said that the scaling is bugged, so that might be something to do with it. That yeah, it but it's like the scale... That's the scaling for how many grudges you need for for the confederation and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, and, for, and for the HR of uh, reckoning. Yeah, two, I, I just feel like 2,500 for effectively exterminating all the Chaos Dwarves and Grimgore seems like wildly low. The, um, yeah. The, the same thing I felt for the, the Nemesis crown. If you seal that bad boy away, you get like 2,500 gold. And that's like, that, like, later in the game, that's basically nothing. 2,500 yeah. gold. I feel like it should be in the tens of thousands of gold and then like each subsequent tier it becomes more enticing because there was just no point other than like the downsides of the crown which if you get in the crown you're probably playing as a faction that doesn't really suffer from those downsides anyway but yeah i don't know i feel like the rewards for certain things were very scuffed with this dlc sadly but still good <laughs> still i think good. i think total war warhammer does have a problem with it's it's numbers in a lot of places like it just doesn't quite know how to balance it on one hand you've got 2500 grudges for exterminating the chaos dwarves and grimgore and on the other hand you've got grape shot 
And somewhere in between, <laughs> there's some balance there. But it's just a bit, I don't know. I think the problem it will always be like gold and the lack of different resources. Uh, for Chaos Wars, for example, if you would get like, you know, 5,000 raw materials or something like that, that would be pretty cool. Um, but for someone else, it's like 5,000 gold. It's like, it's fine. Like in the old playthroughs, for example, if you would sack somebody and you would get like 70,000 gold or something like that, that would be gone in two turns. Like you would just upgrade everything that you could and then that would be gone, right? Like it's cool, but essentially, you know, you skip a couple of turns. Um, that, that's kind of how, how it works. So you kind of need like the, the different resources, I think, to actually, you know, do something cool. Because if it would have been in the Wood Elf scene, would have gotten like gotten you know extra amber, for example, that would have been cool as well. Yeah, I think I think that's probably why I always say this about Total War Troy and Pharaoh is that raiding in those games is actually worth it, whereas every other Total War it's completely worthless. Yeah, there's no point raiding in Total War Hammer Three unless you're a faction which gets to raid for free. Yeah, the the orcs I think get that raiding camp, and that's like about the only time. Yeah, and Torox. Into, yeah. yeah so any, any faction that can raid for free is like well you may as well but it's not i'm not going yay let's do some raiding it's it's just because you can at the same time there's literally no point to raiding um and it's one of those things where it's obviously been in the game since i want to say rome 2 but i don't think they know why it's there anymore they don't really have a good idea as to what it's doing yeah i mean yeah, the, the the first time I raided now w was because of the um, werewolf dude who has to either fight. What is it like? Oh yeah, uh, green skin. It's, no, it's uh, ogres, beastmen, and stuff like that. And nothing of that yeah. was around me. Um, could also fight chaos dwarves, but they were my bros, so I just didn't have anyone. So I just like put five dudes in my own place <laughs> and just raided in my own place <laughs> to get like five. It's, it's I'm looking at him, going, "Are you happy now?" It just yeah, like stood basically. in one, the same region for like 20 turns and then I got him to max rank I was like, oh, I did it. I feel so achieved. <laughs> yeah, I mean, stuff like that is always weird. Um, uh, I think I need to yeah. piece to it, by the way, so... <laughs> Pin that for five minutes and I'll be right back. Don't, don't say any hot takes like about it. me. Okay. As, as if I would. Do we just continue or do we uh, take a little five minute break? <laughs> Probably five minute break. I do like his... I do like his um his little his little unit behind him, the green and red and blue. That is pretty nice. Yeah, I've just got a fridge. I must I must have so many emails with game keys in that I've never actually. Yeah, used. yeah. Sometimes they send you is um somebody was like somebody literally sent me a, an email with just. 75 of the same key or something like that for some like really like awful awful game that had like 30 percent on steam or something like that but one three it's like <laughs> no <laughs> no the age of uh warhammer 3 uh hating is is over oh yeah now now we stand warhammer 3 i mean there's plenty of time yeah. to hate don't you? don't be too excited no but um like i said like we said uh at the beginning of the new year we're all a little bit tired of the constant goddamn negativity, so we're gonna try to have a positive outlook on stuff. We don't have to like be. We have to give credit where credit is due as well, and we're gonna do a quick one before we deep dive instead and restart this whole thing. Now that you're back, well, <laughs> did you guys like the new DLC? Yeah. Well, we're restarting. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know, man. Well, I don't know. Not you were just gone for five minutes and like yeah you should pick up exactly where we left off we were talking about embargoes and game keys and emails and shits i don't know well you we, were gone we, 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 we said about, we nothing of malachi. value we talked about malachi in the grape shot yeah so malachi, it's quite grape shot that's all good. That is, that's good that's good stuff that's good okay. that's great a great a no so right malachi is really good um i think Epidemius, very good. I think Tamakan is fine. I do have my thinking that they, they should have done some more with buffing the units that you can acquire, but fine. But I haven't played any Elspeth, so I'm, I'm interested to hear she, what people think about Elspeth. She was my favourite of the three. Same. I would definitely rank it like Elsef, Malachi, Tamakan. Really? Yeah, 100%. Tamakan is like a funnel of storm, but it's like 
after bits, you just have your heroes. You control A, right click on dudes. Uh, use your uh, use your like super nuke that you have that just rains little nerglings that explode and everything. Um, and um, yeah, I mean like he, he's pretty much a stomp. Malachi uh, is a dude that I I loved in the books. I think he he's one of my favorites um, because he's just. He's not crazy, he's just like completely unbridled as a dwarf because everyone else always has to respect traditions, order, um, the guilds and like bureaucracy and stuff like that. And he just doesn't doesn't need to do that. He's a slayer, he's an engineer, he's like outside of society uh, now. So he's like, yeah, I'm just going to build this. Because the big thing about Malachi is that in dwarven society, you it, like the guilds are really oppressive. You have to like test an invention for hundreds of years sometimes. It has to be super safe, it has to be really cool, like good, good structurally, it can't break. Um, and everything has to be like very, very structured. It's very sturdy stuff they make. But Malachi is like, well, I'm a slayer now, so I'm not part of the guild engineering anymore. So uh, do you guys know what a bazooka is? Because I built one. <laughs> it's like, oh, it, what, what does it do? You know grenades that I throw? They're like, yeah. Well, I put a rocket on that. Do you guys know what a rocket is? It's like... Uh, well, no. Anyway, it fires a grenade really fast at something. Oh, that's really cool. Like, how many times can you fire it? Just once. I made it while we were going here. Gonna test it on the dragon. You're like, okay, yeah, well, do that. Then Malachi is like, yeah! Why not? Yeah, Elspeth, um, her mechanics, they're just... The, the, the guns are more a bit of a nothing burger, which I felt like... Apart from Malachi, like every other lord had like a secondary mechanic that was kind of just nothing. But the gunnery school is really cool. Her units are really great. She, I don't love the lore of death, but like she's on a dragon and that makes her really cool. She's just like all around great times. The campaign's fun, challenging enough without being like as frustrating as Malachi. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely like a, a fairly oaky day, relaxing campaign that's like just kind of um challenging because you don't have a front line but then you start getting heroes and you don't really care about that anymore and you just have artillery shoot at the <laughs> heroes that are blobbing them up basically because the only problem with, i had with this one is that everyone gets so goddamn many heroes so half of my armies were just heroes and it's, they just become so strong that it doesn't like you don't have to care about it yeah that, yeah. that is the uh, one, one of the many downsides of this ridiculous amount of legendary heroes and well generic heroes that we're getting now but I, I guess. I mean, I, I think the guards of more were, were fun though, because you can, you know, put one in in Gelt's territory straight away, teleport to Cathay straight away if you want to, then teleport back, because that's something I really liked. I went down and just burnt down everything to um, um, what was it called, Galbaras, yes, um, down by Ekrund and like just south of um where Wursag starts, and then just back in the Empire. Yeah, and I just really like that. That's it's so super convenient. Otherwise, it would be like, oh yeah, well, just uh, wait ten turns while I move back. You know, I yep. I do think um, abilities that let you teleport around the Immortal Empires map are just fucking god tier. Absolutely, yeah, because that map's so huge. I was trying to finish off my Epidemius campaign. I needed to kill Malice because I hadn't done that the entire. I I purged the Empire, but I hadn't killed Malice, and I killed his last settlement, and then I realized that he had a settlement in. In Nagaroth, in Nagarond, and I was like, I can't be asked to go all the way over there because it's going to take me 15 odd turns. And frankly, that just seems like. So at that point, I just went, nah, done. Can't be bothered with that anymore. Yeah. yeah, I feel like this DLC added quite a lot of good quality of, like, not necessarily quality of life features, but features that have a good quality of life. Like the teleporting around, the grudges thing, I know it's like kind of wonky, but if you do unlock it, it does allow you to teleport around the map, which is nice. And then it also, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't fixing the victory conditions, but it was stuff to do other than grind settlements. Like Malachi, you've got all your adventures to do, and it's like, oh, well, I'm going to go fight the Wood Elves because I've got an adventure. It just, yeah. Elspeth, yeah, yeah the, the, the Gans are okay for that. The buildings, they're, they're all right, but yeah. yeah it's just like a very minor mechanic. Tamarkan easily had the best victory objectives, though. Easily. Oh, yeah, it's I just, just like do like the devotion. Turns. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just do the... Um... Uh, devotion battles so you get everyone up to filthy and then you take null the other ones yep. are still like 70 settlements that you have to look occupy and race and do the rest freaking hate that yeah if, it's it's so weird 
with I, Elsif, it was pretty easy because you could just confederate Carl eventually and we just get like 30 settlements from this. If you, if, CA, yeah, you know, if you're listening, I know you are because this is just good stuff. Um, if you want, <laughs> like, want if you want us to like be the hardest shills that have ever shilled, yeah. all you need to do is just release a patch that is like, okay, this is the victory conditions patch. Everyone has new victory conditions apart from like the five people that have good ones. Imagine like how much better the game would be. Immortal Empires, just everyone has good ones that are fought out. That would be amazing. Sure, that, there's like a mod. Also, also making the the crisis is better because I haven't I haven't played a crisis since I don't know, for about a year because I just find them so tedious. Yeah. Okay, so a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the new DLC? Actually, shocking. Actually, I think, good. I think it's a real it's, it's a real return to form for them, to be honest. Yeah. So I think somebody it just shows how bad shadows of change was. Yeah, somebody told me, uh, well, said in chat, um, smells like Warhammer 2 DLC. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, that is a, that's a, that's a good comparison. Although, this is just a, a fun observation for me. My last two reviews for the Chaos Dwarves and Shadows of Change did dummy numbers, like ridiculous views, uh, just like for like the entire month after they released this one. It did it did well, but like nothing compared to those because I said I recommend it in the title. <laughs> Some people were just like, Positivity? <laughs> Nope. Yeah, <laughs> negative views. An hour. Ne negative views will always, always uh, get more clicks. But um, you know, no just, exceptions. I've just, I've just got that journalistic integrity. Yeah, you got to have that as well sometimes. Yeah, this this podcast, uh, by the way, is sponsored by. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. Hey, that no. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think it's genuine. Genuinely, it, it shows what they can do. And I'm just slightly worried that the vast majority of this was done before the layoffs and now i'm worried about what is coming next yeah that was a yeah that was a very interesting move of like okay we're announcing these layoffs and also we're announcing this dlc it's like hang on shouldn't these two like kind of not be the same thing shouldn't you kind of need these guys for that so yeah, uh, yeah the next dlc period if and when that arrives is going to be interesting to say the yeah. least i mean I, th I think the thing to note is that the vast majority of this work would have been done before those people had been made redundant. Or like, like they, well, they would have been made redundant, but they still would have been working their notice. So they still would have had the manpower up to about probably a week ago, um, depending on sort of like what their their thing is. But it does make me worry about what the DLC coming down the line is, depending on what has been cut. I think we're just happy and you're just like going to sprinkle some excitement into that. <laughs> well, <I laughs> Little bit of consistency. Um, all right. There is that. Worry. Oh, the threads. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite units from the new DLC? Rot Knight. Sanders? Um, I think it's going to be the long rifles. It would have been the, um, the iron sides if they, if they kept the repeaters. I say way better, but uh, yeah. Now they just feel like better handguns. So long rifles are just, just just nice long guns. I just like that. They're just neat. <laughs> they're not particularly amazing. I just think they're neat. You know what? Let me change it. I'm going to say the Demon Slayer. The Demon Slayer General. And the reason I say that is because have you listened to his his pre battle speech? I have not. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I don't basically, think if you listen to it, he's basically going, "Why are you all following me? Why don't you just leave me alone?" <laughs> Damn, <laughs> <laughs> relatable guy. <laughs> Yeah. Go and fight something. I'm just like, this guy sounds a great. He's just like, he's just wandering around. All these idiots are following him around. I just think that's just... Well, he is so a demon amazing. slayer after all, so why not? I tell you what, speaking... Uh, oh, sorry, Fred, you go your favorite unit now. Amethyst Hell uh, Blaster Rockets. Oh, that's a good pick. Hellstorm Rocket. Th those are so much fun, man. I, like, Rod awesome. Knights are great. The Zeppelin's great and everything like that. But, like, seeing the small little purple suns going around, it was like... It's grace. I, I just like oh, this. I've, I've not tried Elspeth. I'm, I'm literally about to start a campaign of it. So I'm very excited about this now. What yeah, do you yeah two, she's grace. What do you two think of the, um, what's it called? The, the goblin hewer? The axe throwing thing? It's uh, weird because I use it a little bit and it would like kill uh, Thros and his lord in like two seconds, but then it didn't do anything. Yeah. Then it's like, uh, because then it doesn't have any more ammunition. But... The crew is still Slayers. You can send them in and they're just going to perform like Slayers. I think it's a very fun 
units. And for like Lord sniping or key target sniping, it is good at that. And like seeing an artillery unit move that fast is hilarious. But I just, I don't really think it's that good. Like yeah. it's, it's okay. Not every unit needs to be an essential pick. But I don't know. I just don't feel like I'd ever use that if I was like actually playing a serious campaign where I wasn't just doing Slayer things. It is very niche, isn't it? It's a very Ouch. niche unit. Like maybe it's one of those units that does well in multiplayer because if you can move it into position, mm. then using it is going to be quite nice. Obviously, that's going to be a prime because if you've if you've got a large general or something, I don't know how multiplayer works. So, mm. but I imagine if you get that into range and shoot it, you're going to have a bad time on the receiving end. But it is very niche, and it's a unit I can't imagine myself using, especially as Malachi, because you've already got Grape Shot, so that basically does everything you need anyway. Yeah. I mean, he buffs so many things anyway. You can just pick and choose. Um, what do you guys think of the new um, Flame Cannon? I love the new I love the new Flame Cannon. I love the new Gyrocopter. The fact that Gyrocopters actually shoot steam. What do they shoot before? Do they shoot guns? Do they shoot bullets? Um, Like little rocks or something <laughs> i can't remember I'm, I'm sure they used to shoot bullet and then they shoot steam which is what they should shoot and that makes sense flamethrowers shoots the brimstone guns shoot flamethrowers yeah. and then you've got the normal gyrocopters who have steam cannons which is what they should shoot which makes me think to the back to the good old days of shadow of the horned rat which was a grade a game but was broken as shit I wasn't aware that the flame cannons have been changed, I'm not going to lie. This is news to me. <laughs> the, the flame uh, cannon went from like having a big ball of fire going... Was it yeah. now just a flame? <laughs> to, yeah, to just being a flamethrower, yeah. I, I think it's like... I really like the old ones, so I'm not sure if I like the new one. Yes, it's, you know, like a new person living in my room. I <laughs> replace it someone I really like. Uh, so, you know, maybe it's good, but... Is it, um, how is it? I, I'm ready I, to move on, yes. I promise, I'm going to have to ask you like questions about how it works. I've, I've not used it. Because um, like, the, the flame cannon for me was always like infantry annihilator. It could shoot yeah. over the heads very easily. So I'm a little bit worried yeah. if it's a flamethrower. Can it can it still get over or is it, does it struggle these days? Not it as well. Like, like a flamethrower. So mm. you can kind of shoot over people because you are dwarves. Uh, but I mean, not in that way at all. At all. Yeah. Oh, bad deal. It's, bad it's, DLC still, comes down. it's still great, and I like it, the fact that it looks like you know when you see those you know YouTube videos of someone using a flamethrower or something, and it's it, you always think a flamethrower is like a very short range weapon, but these things like fire miles. Yeah, like yeah, they're really, really. Fire, and that's kind of what it looks like, and I really like that. It makes me happy. Mind you, I like setting people on fire. So yeah, I, I do really like the gyrocopters. Well, gyrocopters are great. I never wanted to use them before, but now it's like yeah, yeah. I'll have a couple of them. They're great. They're just like cavalry. What you need, they shoot. I don't know why they have four units. I just, but now they've got more. Like the bombs are so much better. The guns are so much better. It's just, I just don't understand why they ever, they ever needed to be like, oh, they can only have four units. Otherwise, it's just gonna be too too overpowered. <laughs> they were, they were ass. Ma <laughs> Did you guys try the Malachi's napalm bombs for them? For some of them. No, not yet. Uh, it, it just drops a bomb and sets fire to everything around, uh, like um, in there where it's exploded, and that'll st keep killing people. It's great. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, because no one invented the Geneva Convention there yet. Nobody really, you know, thought, hey, maybe we shouldn't use these. So instead, you get like the Grudge Rakers, which is also like kind of cool, uh, because they're just like kind of almost blunderbusses, I guess. Mm. Uh, so they're pretty fun as well. I liked like all the additions, honestly. I had no complaints about like the, the fun and the cool factor of any units. It's it's really interesting though with um how this one is essentially the same price, but nobody's complaining about it from Shadow Change. And I know and I kinda know why as well. Um and I'm re I really think it's because of the reworks that like we there were reworks this time around. Because they had they breathe so much it? more. Yeah, but it breathes so much life into the in, really into the does. campaign. Yeah. yeah but, but the, the thing is, the reworks aren't even part of the DLC and yeah. like Epidemius as well. But people f kind of feel like it comes as a package. Well, yeah. when you when you buy the DLC, you're thinking, well, I am. I'm not only buying this DLC. I'm also supporting the the future of like free content. It's like I buy the yeah. the uh, the Sisters of Twilight, and you know, Dryker is also like part of that DLC in a way. So like with with uh, shadows of changes like so I'm getting less units, 
I'm getting less lords per money, and I'm getting nothing for free. So just like, yeah. Shadows yeah. of Change did feel very lazy, didn't it? Extremely. I would. I, I don't. I can't see them doing it, but I would like to see something added for the 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 races that got the the shaft of Shadows of Change. So it feels like so cool for Nurgle to get all this stuff, and granted, Siege ain't as broken as Nurgle, but still, it'd be nice to see them have something. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've got a lot to say about the Nurgle reworks. And not all of it's good, but it definitely is. It's, it's better. Better. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. By a, by a country. Mile. I got some people coming and saying, oh, old Nurgle, cyclical buildings were so much better. I was like, are we playing the same game? <laughs> they sucked. They were terrible. Yeah. yeah they were they impossible were, but... to get anything done. I mean, I always find that some people will just like want to like be the dude who uh, um, who like knows things and is really good, and they'll like say, "Oh well, this thing isn't bad. It wasn't bad. I liked that uh, because it made it like difficult." It's like, yeah, but nobody played it because it wasn't difficult. It was just bad. <laughs> God damn it! Yeah, I mean, realistically, old Nurgle actually had one of the better economies in the game, but because everything costs so much. You never really noticed it. You were constantly just spending all your money on building buildings that then didn't pay out for thirty turns, compared to you know Bretonia, who can slap down a farm and uh, make its money back in two, which is one of the main problems with Nurgle. Um, are we going to talk about the reworks now? Yes, we have actually already delved into those with the reworked in, units. In that case, right? So here's my here's my Nurgle the feeling. The structure is so gone. Their feelings. <laughs> Yeah, Folks, it's Friday night. Got. Fred's been talking for ten hours. This is going to be a mess. <laughs> the only thing I've got about Elspeth is that I quite like Imperial Goth Mummy. Um, that's the only thing I've got there. Um, but Nurgle. So I, I think the cycle change is really good. Being able to use infections to rush your buildings, great. The fact that you use infections to build your buildings, fine. Yeah. Um. The economy's a lot better because they've taken the, the money out of the cycle buildings and just moved it onto its own building. Ideal, which means that as soon as you have a settlement, you can make money off that rather than building a cycle building and then making, you know, the, that amount of money in about 10 turns. Um, but with that said, I do think that um, first off, the amount of infections you get is a very slow start. Yep. You get... 10 by default a turn i think or is it five it's not much that, yeah, um, per, per building that that bug that okoy found and told us about where you build the infection building and cancel it i'd use that in every single noble campaign after i knew that was a thing oh just instantly locks you, you could do that. legs it's a you know that, that boy's a genius oh, oh but, but it was also capped right um like they're gonna change because right now you can only get 37 per battle or something yeah, like that yeah, regardless so that's gonna be changed as well so you're gonna get like way more later on yeah, yeah, I flagged that bug. Um, but <laughs> not naming names, but if I did, it was me. Um, but <laughs> once they fix that, it should be better. But at the moment, I think one of the main problems that Nurgle has is that even with the changes, you can get in trouble very early on mm. with the fact that you will run out of units to recruit. Yeah. Um. So. Demons obviously disintegrate if they get sad, so you're at a higher risk of losing units. In a, All in a demons battle. got buffs this patch, at least. Do they? Yeah, 10 to 5 more leadership on every single one of them. Huh. Uh, well, I mean... I mean, it's still like the, the problem. I was fighting Kugath, and when he had like 8,000 health left, he just crumbled and died in like a matter of seconds, so... I mean, it's, it would have been earlier before. Yeah. Uh... So, so as as any Nurgle faction, you you can get roughly, I think, about sixteen units from the start. The units you have starting, um, I think, roughly forty percent of them will be Nurglings. Um, but after that, unless you have a building, you, there's no more units. That's it. You're, you're done. And the fact that you need to use, in, you know, I think, it costs two hundred infections to build a building. I think it's more. I think it might be three. I think it's two. Let me double check. <laughs> it's yeah, I, I, I think I think it building. depends on what uh, what building it is and stuff. Yeah, I think the basic. Oh yeah, wait. No, I think 200. you're right. 200, 400 for the advance, isn't it? You're right. But even then, it still it still takes four turns to build that building, which means that even after you've got 200 infections, which can take 10 odd turns depending on what you're doing, maybe that'll be faster once they fix the the cap. You still have four more turns before you even have a unit to recruit, and then you need to wait more turns to get another one and so forth. So 
I think Nurgle has a real issue at the start where you just do not have enough um, units available. And I think the easy fix for that is either Nurgle's, all Nurgle factions start with the military building. Just one build. Like Kugath and Epidemius can have the Plague Bearer one, and Tamakan can have the Marauder and Chaos Warriors one, whatever. Mm. Um, or just make Nurglings infinite. I don't. So that you you can always recruit Nurglings. Yeah, the, the, the infinite Nurglings definitely makes the most sense because. I think every single faction in the game that owns settlements has units that they can recruit with no buildings. Like, I think dwarf, so called dwarf tier can get zero. Yeah, I think dwarf zero. can get dwarf warriors. Miners. Can't they? Tier, or miners? I swear it was I get, Yeah, miners or something. And basically, there's no other faction in the game which just goes, yeah, no, you've got nothing to recruit. <laughs> Screw you. That's a skill issue. I didn't recruit anything in 50 <laughs> turns on Epidemius or uh, Tamarcon. I'm not even kidding. Like, at turn 50 or 60, I was like, I'll make another arm. It's like, shit, I have no units to recruit. I didn't build anything. I didn't lose oh, yeah. a single thing. I mean, it's, I was using yeah, really, the plague bears <laughs> the whole time as Epidemius. But, 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 but I do agree with you. They do need to like fix that. You can't speed it up though. You so can, once, once I once it's built, yeah. once it's built, you can use infections. But particularly early game, and this is where the real problem yeah. is, is like you will have no infections to yeah. rush it, let alone build the friggin' building. Infections um, are way too feast or famine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, the, the, once once you've got once you've got some buildings, it's fine. But the main way of making it is just building that infection building. Um, yeah. I think once they once they take off the cap, it'll be better, I hope. Um, but I, I had a test a couple of test campaigns where I tried taking out Malice early on, and Malice is a nightmare to deal with early on. And I would lose four or five units just trying to kill him, at which point I'm like, well, I'm badly damaged. The AI can just recruit endlessly. By the time my units are healed up, I will have half an army versus probably a stack and a half of his, at which point I'm probably screwed. And I have no way to recruit more units. Yeah, so you're going to have to avoid losing those units. <laughs> yeah, which is really difficult when demons just die when they get sad. So, uh, Not malice, kind of, it's just kind of... completely unkillable. <laughs> yes. no, the, the, uh, I did that one, like Epidemius I did, uh, I think I've done a, that one seven turns where I kill malice. Because I was making a guide for us um, that I stopped at like turn 10 after I like edited it up to turn 10. Um, and what you do always is just like less... Malice just fights in a bunch of plague bearers because he doesn't hurt them that much and they won't hurt him. Then with the rest of the army routes, he'll also just run away. That's what you do every single time. Completely but ignore Malice him. Doesn't run away when he's when he's turned into yes. demon form. And the and the plague bearers, they can't uh, hurt him enough. So if he just like wades through those, it's like yeah, some of your uh, plague bearers will die. It's not gonna ruin the units. But uh, you just largely ignore him. You just play the battle just like as if not he's not there. He'll be like, I'm still here. I'm here. Don't ignore me. You're like, so, don't look at him. Don't look at him. He's like, no, you have to look at me. No, no. And you just uh, do that. Easy peasy. I, I tried that. I had the problem whereby he would just carve his way through units of plague bearers. And I had no way of killing him. And he was unbreakable. So I was kind of like, well, I'm going to have yeah. to try and... Well, so and I just kept sending unit after unit uh, at him. And when, he, when he transforms, uh, th that you have troubles. Uh, you got to yeah. just not hurt him enough uh, before he transforms. Because when he, trans oh. when he transforms, he's absolutely unkillable. Then then you just got to have to run from him, basically. So he takes so, down in health by, by himself. So treat him like the Hulk and just don't annoy Bruce Banner. Yeah, you just... Treat him like uh, the big donut boy in Simpsons when they will when all the mascots come alive. <laughs> just don't just don't look. Fine. Okay. Good. Well. Um, so, what did everyone think of the plagues then? The plague changes. Plagues are so much better. A lot better. Not perfect, they, but a lot better. They? They, they, they're still like the number tweaking stuff there, but at least like you have to think about what the hell you're clicking about. Um, and the UI is pretty good. The UI for the DLC is pretty nice. The, the random the is, is cool. Because it, it means that like I... instead of just making the exact same thing, you just make kind of the same thing every time. Yeah. Okay, here's my problem with that. Is that most of the effects are garbage. Uh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but there's also... Which means... That was just really bad before. I, I don't know. For, for MP, it's that good you, before. There's no point least, giving them to enemies. They just suck. It's so much no, better to put it, them on you. And even then. There's basically two effects that are God's tier. And that is the campaign movement. Yeah. And the attrition. Yeah. Because no matter who they're on, they're useful. And obviously the attrition one's, you know, really good on enemy armies. And I, li I like the way that the plagues now don't seem to have a cap on who they can jump to. 
it's based on um, I think it's based on like their chance of spread decreases with each jump. So eventually they will die out, but they have a much higher chance to continue to bounce around, which I really like. That's nice. The problem yeah. is most of the plague effects are so fucking useless that even blessed, it's barely worth the effort. Maybe this is why you lose so much to Malice, because what you're doing is Vanguard deployments, um, armor and melee defense, and your uh, shitty demons become uh, way better. Yeah, but the point you're trying to want to take out Malice, you probably don't have the infections to actually use a plague, especially if you want a military building. Mm. Which is I mean, I, I usually kill him at like turn 20 uh, is when yes. I have wiped him out. So like turn 16, I ambush and then I like go for the rest. I, I just kind of had a no I made a non-aggression pack with him and sailed across to beat up Throg instead because it was easier. Yeah, that's also one way to deal with him. Yeah, as, long as, you, <laughs> as long as it works, it works, right? Exactly. Um, but the, the, I think the problem with Plague is that most of the effects are garbage, in, especially the ones that have an effect on the AI economy. Like anything which increases upkeep or reduces money is just... I don't really care because the AI has so many bonuses that it's basically pointless. So the the melee, like melee, and armor and melee attack and armor and stuff... It's fine um but the main the good ones are the attrition and the campaign movement range and the fact that you get a three day three turn cooldown with each effect that you use means that more often than not i ended up capped on not being able not not having any effects free rather than having not enough infections I was basically a case of, well, I can't use anything because I can't actually make three because I've used the good ones and now I can't actually make anything else. Yeah. Else. Not perfect, but the last one was just, once again, just... so so bad and boring. Well, I, I see that the effects were fine. I didn't have a problem with the way the plagues worked generally. Um, I like the fact that you can now buff the infections and stuff. I, what I would like to see is either a way to like unlock infections or plague types with infections or alternatively some way to like overpower them or something just like i'm gonna make this one blessed by spending you know a thousand infections or something I, which i think would make it a lot more interesting i yeah, wanted um, some like cool. gr some grom style combinations where like oh well if you somehow manage to with the grace of the random number generation you get this this and this next to each other then you unlock this special fourth effect and all of your nerdlings oh yeah now that would be really into, cool as well hmm. I, I just I feel like they just like kind of took it to a point and then like okay we're done that's it that's that's good enough when it could have been great <laughs> yeah I, yeah but but they had like one max two dudes doing like each of the reworks right so they probably just didn't have like enough time for this um because you know they didn't even really try out the grudge system with how many grudges you get for stuff which is getting changed we did get the patch notes today that they are looking yes. to change it. Uh, yes. With today's patch, which was just a uh, soft lock on the tutorial at turn five, but the grudges are getting checked out. And right now, also, if you kill, um, if you raise a place with a garden or more, um, as the vampires at least, then the game just gets soft locked basically and crashes. So, that, like the old um, pirate vampire pirates coves. Oh, uh, what a classic that? bug! Yeah, that classic bug. So it, it's the same thing, I guess. Did they actually fix that? Yeah, yeah, they did because uh, it's it happened quite often for people, and crashes and stuff like that is one of the few things that developers will try to fix pretty fast because that's like I think it's one of the reasons where you where you're actually allowed to um, um, refund the game. This plane doesn't uh, work. Yeah, that does make sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I was a bit. I, I don't know. Like, I, I. I get it. Testing games is hard, but I was not that far into my Malachi campaign when I kind of hit the this grudge system doesn't seem to work very well <laughs> feeling. I it was, uh, it was fine to start off with, and then as soon as I sort of hit I don't know, turn 30, I kind of went, no, oh, this doesn't seem right. I managed to superpower my uh, my first um, playthrough of yes, the reworks with Thorgrim. So I, I go up, I'm just going to start fighting um, uh, Skarsnik. Skarsnik, uh, I'm, I'm trying to like uh, position myself, and I position myself incredibly poorly because my Gurge throwers can't shoot. My, my uh, Gorlers won't, don't want to shoot either. And he comes in a, in a way where his fanatics will just like shred my front line, and I lose that, and then they take everything around us. Uh, and this is like 
after I take the first province, it's really early on. And then I have to like redo my entire um, army. And then everything is just full of grudges all the way up. Uh, so I just get like the max grudge, like turn 15. Well, well the first um, age you can, I get the max one. Or if it's the second one or something. And, um, you know, th then I have like a free army that is just like high tier dudes at turn 20 or whatever. And the other army that's also just like murdering stuff. Uh, that just set us up uh, really, really well. It it does it does kind of feel like the grudge system punishes you for playing well. Yeah. Because I found one of the best ways of making grudges is basically to have your army. It's basically like waiting around the corner, and the enemy. So you have a settlement. You have your little army here. The enemy comes along, sacks your settlement, and then your army like jumps them. <laughs> And it's almost like you're waiting for some reason to be fucked off at someone. Yeah. It's like when you hold your food with... in, in reach of the dog as an excuse to bollock it. It's like, <laughs> right. hang on a minute. It's basically that, that. That's not really fair. So, putting, there. putting your, your prime rump set and then having also a baseball bat and waiting for the dog <laughs> and then just like, yeah. wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah, get it. Like that. Which does not feel like the, the way the system should work. Um. Um, it, it is definitely kind of weird in that regard. I, like, like I said, they, they were going to change it because every single mechanic they've ever put in that has like a negative effect on the lowest level, like Malice, for example. Malice's mechanic got changed every single patch for like two years uh, because it was so bad when you were like, be, like I, you had one that was like bad in one way, either for either we go to battles and shit a campaign or vice versa. They nerfed down constantly. Um... And it was just weird, you know. Um, it's, so now they're changing as well. So the lowest levels on um, on the ages are going to be much, much more milder on you. Mm. I, I think that's probably better. I, I don't mind not... I mean, the, the problem is, every time I was I was using this system, I was like, it felt like I was clawing my way around that little dial, desperately trying to get to the next... And getting really frustrated when the AI didn't want to fight my armies and was running away and playing hard to get. I don't know. I feel like any, any 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 uh, mechanic that puts in time pressure is just inherently going to make you feel like, oh shit, well, you just can't play at your own pace. You're just forced to artificially attack people continuously yeah. to get... I, I feel like the 10 turns is brutal. Yeah. Well, it's always weird, right? Somebody reminded me that, like, the green skin wa is 20 turns, and that's, like, way too long. It's, that should be 10 turns, if anything. Yeah. I, yeah that that I, one I has like different the issues. Way, the, the, the benefit of the wa is where you can use it when you want it, and maybe that's what the dwarves need, is basically you need to go, this is my age of retribution. I mean, that's you, what I'm doing. You could just like you the, get a certain amount of time. You could just, like, pull or, the wa system over to them, and just be like, oh, well, you know, you're declaring a grudge against these guys, and then you just get bonus grudges to fill up your grudge meter I mean, the ages should really, like, um, multiply with how many grudges are around you. So if there's too many grudges, it's like, that's it! That's a reckoning! We're in the age of reckoning now! Basically, right. instead of just like, ah, it's another age of reckoning now, it's like, oh, we just... <laughs> another one? Another <laughs> one? Finished the other... We're done, like, five in a row, so maybe we can just... Relax a little bit. Yeah, maybe I don't maybe know, like an like... age of vibing, you know? <laughs> age of vibing, <laughs> maybe? Age of chill. I mean, it's good to have I... something, but, but what's the... sometimes you just run out of grudges around you. And it's yeah, uh, weird. I, I did have that problem where I didn't... Re like, all the grudges seemed to be on the elves, and the only elf faction I had near me was Malice. And I wasn't at war with them anyway. So it's kind of like, well, what am I doing with this now? And... It kind of. Felt, I also didn't want to put it off because then it goes. Oh, well, it's going to take twenty percent more long next time. And I was like, I barely made it to tier two this time. If you give me twenty percent, I'm not going to make it to tier one. Give me a break. Yeah, I mean, like in my Malachi playthrough, I just started ignoring it completely. I just didn't care about it anymore. Might well be the the best option. But in Thorgrim, I, I I like. Confederated everybody fairly quickly. Uh, everybody except someone I can't remember who was. Um, it, it worked pretty well in that one. They did say it was something to do with like teleporting to quest battles, didn't they? It would sort of like open you up. To, yeah, like, but because contacts. It was every faction yeah. you encountered increased your uh, the threshold. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So everyone you see, so teleporting was was pretty bad. Yeah. 
What about Elspeth then? What's her mechanics? So I know they've got guns of more, which are like a teleporty thing. So, so, so yeah, the guns of more, you can teleport and you can put in like a garrisons in different places. So if you see Carlos getting attacked all the time, you build a garrison for him, which is pretty good. You can also recruit from that one. So if you're over there, you can get like Helbadiris or Mortar, um, Knights of the Rose and like things like that, which is really cool. And then you have um, the oh, Armory. So yeah, so there... You get your currency, uh, which is uh, schematics, and then you can buy amethyst units, which is just better units, like it's armored uh, iron sides or um, magical grenade thrower on horses, um, or it's, um, you know, stuff like that. And then later on, you get like the magical armory, so you get the um, amethyst hell rockets. Um, Hellstorm rockets, uh, uh, Hellstorm rocket battery, and you get uh, land ships, stuff like that. So that one is also really cool. That one needs some tweaking as well, because right now it's like you get schematics, and it gets uh, more and more schematics to unlock like uh, armored iron cider or amethyst iron cider every time. If you lose those, it doesn't like reset or anything like that. So I got like five. They managed to get killed. Absolutely not my fault. And then it was like 2,000 schematics just to get like another Iron Cider. I'm not going to pay 2,000 schematics when I can get like bombardment from the heaven of magical death and orbital rockets or some shit. Like, I'm not going to pay that. It's weird. Yeah, the, the highest so that one needs also, tweaking as well. Is the highest tier ability bugged for you? Because it was for me for like five turns. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I only tried it once and I was like, oh, well, I missed. So that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, like used it and everybody just moved like away <laughs> yeah basically thing? like like i used this and then everybody just moved away from it and i was like good there. <laughs> yeah i um i think it's like as close as you can get to play nikki claw without playing nikki claw like she she's got like a sort of nuke she's got really good things with, uh, for for a gunpowder unit about making them crazy she's great the uh the empire rework which is you know Red. Empire rework is uh, is great. I would say I, I was playing Gelt as well. Reworks. Yeah, it probably is. Gelt is uh, is incredibly, incredibly strong. Strong. I've been running around with like Gelt and nine wizards in an army, just running, flying into things, and then using every color of the rainbow. <laughs> uh, just like gold, purple, birds, and then you just keep on doing that all the time. Um, but that's fun. But I did find Tamarkan, who also has a nuke button, which is also insane. And he just absolutely stomped the ever-living shit out of that army. <laughs> like, it was so one-sided. It's like, spirit leech. And then it's like, 14,000 and a half. <laughs> it's like, it's, it does nothing. Yeah, the, the, the Empire rework for Carl, like, changing it from the bar to a different bar, it's like, it's... I think it's like one of the best changes that they made for like a range of reasons. It not only means that you can't just get like chain fucked over because Festus keeps uh, obliterating whoever it is that's close to him, like Hodgeland or Middleland, one of the two. Uh, and it means that like you've also now got this secondary objective that's like, okay, well, I want to take control of the whole empire. And it's it's another thing to do alongside just the grinding of the settlements. And then the, the new way to confederate and use prestige, more ways to use prestige. So like by the time you've confederated everyone, it's not just pointless anymore. It's, um, yeah, yeah it's, just, it's the best rework by far. I feel like the dwarves definitely got the the short end of the stick. It, it also got some. Um, it also got some issues. Like I had Ungrim, which was my best bro, to take over like uh, Eshen or some shits. I was like, "Do you want to trade with me?" And he's like, "No," because the settlement trading is always like you can always sell stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, and you can trade settlements, but if you need just one place, it's impossible to get. You will never get that place ever again. No, it's it that the whole settlement trading really pisses me off because it's like why bother putting it in if it's basically just a way to sell settlements? Why even have the option to buy settlements if the AI is never going to let you? Yeah, it's uh, definitely needs some tuning, but like like you said, it's it's pretty goddamn good. I've been enjoying it. Gelt is like so strong. He's easily the best mage faction in the game by far. Um, because you can uh, like have you guys checked the items and things like that? You can guess. No. Well, first of all, you upgrade stuff and nothing costs anything almost. Like, uh, Gel spell spells like um, Gehenna's Hounds and um, uh, Metal Rain, uh, Searing Doom, cost like two Winds of Magic, right? Uh, regrowth for somebody overcast is like six Winds of Magic or something. Um, 
it just gets so so insanely cheap everything so that's why you can just keep on doing that that and his stacks as well like how much wins of magic can have in an army my army had like 330 wins Jesus. or something like that so you know you just keep on casting spells like the winds of uh death dude gets an item so when he kills stuff you get more winds of magic reserve constantly uh throughout the battle um the light wizard gets an item so everything around him like 35 or 55 meters all the projectiles are reflected back uh, so if you just like have the gang there <laughs> people just start shooting at him it's just like they just die <laughs> Why um, are you kidding yourself? yeah basically and there's like a ton of those things that well it's actually not a lot of those but but it's a couple of those that are like oh that's pretty cool and strong like uh, uh comet of cassandora is like what's well, like six wins of magic or 10 or something or eight or something it's, it's so cheap uh but it's fun i think this is the kind of stuff that makes the dlc worth it weirdly yeah having having the I mean, reworks yeah i mean like i always say that like it's the reworks it's always been like that contracts uh you pay a little bit more for a dlc and you get the rework for everybody because that's what breeds lives into everybody well in, into everything because now we are having like a seventy-four thousand players or something like that uh seventy-two thousand player peak which was pretty good the highest peak um, pretty, since Immortal Empires, which was 100,000, so not bad. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was uh, pretty gold and cool. Because now we've had... Um, when was it actually released? I was uh, <laughs> completely forgot now. Tuesday? Yeah. Whatever day that was. Tuesday? Monday or Tuesday. 30th of April, which was... Yeah, so so we're having like a player peak of 74,000 where 73,974, uh, which is like beating Chaos Dwarfs like 400 people or something like that. Uh, and it's not even the weekend. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it, it, I think it really does show that they've they've turned it around, which is good. Very, because very good. Just don't fuck it up. We had another... <laughs> have we had another shadows of change i think yeah yeah because it's so funny because still it's polarizing shadow change even though they have so many units in that dlc right like so many uh, and people are still like well it's all right it's too expensive this one yeah, we... it's like two bucks cheaper if you're gonna get all three of them and people are like yeah 100 percent, just get us yeah I, I think the problem is it does it does i say it does come in and it it changes swathes of the game and makes it kind of feel like worth it it feels like more stuff has changed whereas shadows of change it kind of came in added some more factions and it was kind of like all right well let's uh yeah let, let's just break it down so shadows of change you got your three new factions and i mean changeling was like super different mother stanky was like she had a little a hot thing so it was like kind of different and then uh yuan Bo, he was also a little bit different apart from that Basically nothing. With this DLC, you get your three new guys who all have very, very unique mechanics. You have Epidemius, who's a new faction. You have Carl, who's got a new set of mechanics, so it's almost a new campaign. You've got Balf, who's got yeah. a basically new campaign. All the basic dwarves, which I will, for argument's sake, count as one, is basically a new campaign. You have like twice the amount of content that you got in the last DLC, and it's much better content, if you ask me. I will say that Dwarves definitely got, like, everyone got, like, every rework faction got, you know, it, it, a new breed, a, a new breath of life. Because if you're going to play, like, Thorek, you can do the Legendary Grudges down there. Mm -hmm. If you're going to play as Grumbriddle, you do Dawn, and, like, so on and so forth. Even, like, Kugather is, like, yeah, more Blessed Plagues, try that out. Um, Carl, it's, like, uh, the loser of it was probably, like, um, Wolfheart's. Marcus Wolfhart. Yeah, I have to say it like the... Marcus Wolfhart. Uh, yeah, I have to say it like them. Otherwise, I don't know, like streaming dementia at this point. I've just been awake for... Uh, we've just been on for so long. It's like, Marcus Wolfhart. It's um, <laughs> weird. Like random names. Yeah, basically. Yeah, so overall, good to DLC, what, what, I think. What, I mean, I think the the pricing, like, I'm still, I'm still a little bit like... It is expensive, like the the, the seven pounds forty nine you... per DLC, but then seven ninety nine for Silence and the Fury. It's like, but I, I mean, like I've kind of meddled out with that one uh, because 
it's like it's, if you buy all of them technically it's like 7.6 uh dollars for one uh, for, for one lord right um or if you buy um buy them standalone it's like nine bucks right nine bucks every one of these took me on stream two days to complete um like 10 bucks for that kind of content i have paid far more for absolute nothing <laughs> comparatively uh like i like I, I am stupid and i have bought uh building blocks for conan exiles right like just to build a house fancier it doesn't do anything it's just like different and look cooler right i've spent so much money on just like oh yeah now i can make a japanese castle or whatever you know so i mean like 10 bu uh, nine bucks for like one lord one of these it's, it's pretty good and then um with the bundle for like seven and uh, seven point six yeah i don't know how much cheaper you want them to get it's like yeah i think at it's certain just... points i'm 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 old enough like i'm that old that i'm like yeah i'm not gonna live long enough if i'm gonna argue about two dollars every single time if it's gonna be five bucks per per lord or something i think it's i think it's just like still a bit sore because of like how much of an increase it is like in yeah. such a short period of time like in if you do work it out, like you said, um, like hours per pounds, which is what I and a lot of other people probably work it out by, it's it's pretty good. Like you're well getting your your hour per pound. But yeah. Just compared hour per to, pound it is. to eight pounds for two lords. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't want to really bring in the um, hour per pound because I hate that discussion. I really do. You can't really measure it like that because it's like you know you go to the movies and it's. I mean, yeah. you know, put twelve bucks to see Dune or whatever. It's three hours. Uh, or like one of my favorite games is like Old Man's Journey. It's also like fifteen bucks or something like that it used to be, and it's like one and a half hours long. Yeah, I played it. Um, like can you literally? I yeah, you can literally play that when I like refund it as well. I played Sayonara was, Wild Hearts recently. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I got it on sale, but that game and it slaps. It's brilliant. But um, yeah. Oh, I thought of one more, one more complaint. Yep. What, why in the trailers do they show them all fighting each other when they are nowhere close? And did you ever? By any of the other DLC lords in any of the campaigns, <laughs> because I sure didn't. Yeah, I had to uh, in with Town County. You have to go to Null. That's true. Also, why do they show them <laughs> always fighting in sieges when sieges are really bad? Because they look cool. The coolest heck, boy. Yeah. I, I just feel it'd be more fun if uh if like you remember the Immortal Empires trailer? It was like the Avengers. It was just. It was just everyone was freaking out. Oh my god, it's it's both. Yeah. That's why Balf's living yeah. next door to um, Meow Ying. I just feel like it'd be more interesting if we see, oh, Tamakan's over there, fine out with Greasus and whoever, and then Malakith's up in the north getting Malakith? Malakai's up in the north getting killed by everyone. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just feel like it's I get why they do it, because you can share everyone off on screen at the same time. And I know it doesn't matter. It just bothers me. <laughs> it's, it's false advertising, damn it. Okay. If we actually have our gripes, so with UIs, oh right? <laughs> imagine, comes. imagine you have somebody who programs real life things like they do goddamn game UIs, right? <laughs> somebody just goes, everything for this page doesn't fit, so I'll have one page where the text just keeps on going on the other side, and you're just gonna have to like check the other side for like just half of it where it continues like that. So you read like one one sentence, and then you continue that sentence on the other one, and then you have to turn back for the next next line, right? And you're like, well, can't you just format it so it fits on the page? And you're like, yeah, that makes sense. And then you go to the Book of Grudges, because all the goddamn UIs are so much better now, but in the Book of Grudges, you have fucking scroll bars for stuff. It's a book, it's a literal book in the game, and you have a scroll bar complaining about so it's like some goddamn stupid shit. It's, like, I get angry because they have this little little window with a scroll bar where you have to like, oh, I go to the book and I go to, to the scroll bar. It's, like, it's a page fitted into the fucking page. Like, what? Like, what? What are you on? <laughs> well, like, how do you get to work? <laughs> like, God damn it! One day, one day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow Fred's. I'm gonna wait until he goes to the doctors, and I'm gonna wait until they're taking his blood pressure. And then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a little, I'm gonna have a little like an iPad or something, and I'm gonna lift it up to the window so he can see it. And I'm gonna show him a scroll bar, and I'm gonna watch <laughs> that blood pressure just. <laughs> Like, it's so insane as well. Like the goddamn dwarven like tech tree. Like it's better, but they have similarly amount of stuff. They don't have that much more stuff. 
in it than they used to have, right? They don't. Like, it's it's kind of the same amount of stuff. But, and they used to, like, have to scroll a little bit on the old one. So now they just divided it so you can have two scroll bars. <laughs> and, like, the best part about it is that you have so much dead space. And there's, like, five things at the end. You scroll for the five things at the end. You could have, like, fit it all in just a little bit. Like, it's absolutely, like, I don't understand how they just, like, somebody just went... Twice the amount of scroll bars. Twice. <laughs> We're supposed to have. If we have one now, can we get two? And it's how, how much damned as keeps of this in oh. in the final video. <laughs> so, He's cut like, off at least seventy five percent of it. Like, but, but it's so insane. And somebody said, "Oh well, if it's divided, it's easier to read." And somebody said, "Oh yeah, I have an easier time as well, since there's more spacing between." And I'll say, "There's. It's not easier to read if you don't have as much on the screen. If you just get rid of most of it on the screen, you can't even read it." I get so in. I get angry about this. Why would you make it? Why do you make it like this, you white person? Oh, you, know, you know that meme where they say like something, and then you have the the old lady being led away, going, "Yeah, of course, Graham. You basically need that with Fred, just complaining about scroll. Bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, come on, come back to bed, back to bed. Come on, you're fine. I remember. I don't even mind when, when like the first vertical the, scroll the bars too much. Trees, I'm just like, oh, I'm just know what's gonna come when, when we get to talk about this. I don't even mind like vertical scroll bars that much, but it's like the horizontal ones are so unnatural. It's I hate them. All right, well, anyway, that was anyway, my gripe. So, so I, I know I shelved replays earlier, but I'm going to bring replays back. Um, I don't know, Fred, you might not even be aware of this, but I've, I've had an issue with replays. Siege siege replays. I've heard of I this, a yeah. Bug. I found a bug in Warhammer 3 that's been doing my nutting for months at this point, because this bug has been there since they did the siege rework, which was... Was that with Shadows of Change or before? I think it was before. Um, yes. Oh, you mean like the the latest one rework? Because otherwise it's like Warhammer 3 reworked all of them. Then they did yeah, another the, one the, in the Shadow one of Change, they, I think, yeah. They changed the health points and the walls and stuff. Yeah, I think that's Shadow of Change. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so apparently what the problem I was having was, was that Siege replays were desyncing. Not all the time, just sometimes. And I was losing my mind because I when I do a video, I record the replay which is fine unless it desyncs and i was having siege desyncs a lot and i was like i don't know why this is happening and i was trying to pin it down i thought maybe it was mods no it wasn't mods i was losing my mind and then during my epidemius campaign i realized what it was because i remember during a battle um i had built some siege towers that had turned out a little bit small because I'd actually built rams instead. And in spite of this, I was just going to style it out. Um, but obviously rams are quite slow. So these rams were slowly moving onto the wall. And I remember the unit pushing it, unit of plague bearers, got absolutely fucking eviscerated by cannon shots. So the towers were shooting cannons at them. These guys were getting fucked. I was like, well, oh well. So during the replay, I went to say, oh, look, these guys are getting not fucked. Because they weren't. They were fine. They were at the gate. They were almost untouched because the towers weren't shooting cannonballs, they were shooting arrows. Because when you load a replay, it forgets what the siege settlement level was. And so therefore immediately desyncs. And this issue has been there for months. I'm and you really finally got to the bottom of this. I finally got to the bottom. I was I was at the <clears> point <throat> where I had a cork board, I had a tin foil hat. I was losing my mind because I was like, this this is obviously happening and I couldn't get people to agree with me. I couldn't work out what the fucking reason was, but I managed to, I worked it out. I know what the issue is now, which means I could get people to test it and it was repeatable, which means I've now sent it to CA and gone, your replays are fucked. Fix it, please. Whoever's left, <laughs> if you have anyone there. It, it's not scroll bars, but it's it's something that's been niggling me. I mean, like, yeah, still, like, I uh, I always have the scroll bars to to complain about. <laughs> but uh, I, I just don't understand why why they why they make them. Uh, oh, God. It's it's so weird. <laughs> I, I I I even like uh, I, I check every single like UI resolution and like different resolutions to see if there's something else. I like I don't have a super wide screen, so I found someone on YouTube that had a super wide screen. 
plays Warhammer 3, they still have scroll bars. <laughs> it's yeah, it's okay. insane. Like got there's 14, a screen. 40 widescreen I, yeah. I still get scroll bars yeah i mean like the, 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 you can see like everything but then you know the window opens it's like that much of the window is just scroll around it's an like aspiring modder out there make a scroll barless ui version and we will get you to the top of the workshop somehow we will do it <laughs> we will use our tiny amount of power ah uh, the ui is so terrible i have a i have a google doc which is like different grudges on us like there's there's so many i i filled that out in like a couple of weeks the great every time somebody said grudges. something yeah basically it's 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 insane it's how bars, isn't it no it's not just that you know like how if somebody gets too many abilities uh in their oh, unit yeah. card uh mm -hmm. then you have to go from like from left to right to check the mouse the scroll bar yeah, it's a, a bit, yeah. A bit, no well, well, well like bar. no but like in reality if you go from right to left like it'll skip every second one How, like, why would... Uh, there was a mod for so long that just, like, spaced them out a little bit, and they could still fit them all in the card as well. Oh, I know. It's, 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 it's insane, isn't it, how many issues this game has that you think, so, if you just spent 20 minutes fixing... Well, mind you, I say 20 minutes fixing it. Considering what the code base is, I bet it would probably take months of work to fix that. I will say, though, the new stuff for the DLC, all of the all new things are so much better with the UI. So, so much better. Like, the, the Book of Grudges thing is just, like, a small, funny thing. I don't mind it too much. Because the That's book is... The, the book is, like, so much better, though. Like, it's it's great. Uh, it still has, like, some issues. Um, I, I've even shown on, like... Sometimes I go into this rant as well, sometimes, uh, on stream, because it's, like, even the quest items uh, that you get for some of the lords have like a scroll bar on them and it just moves like that's basically it's like nothing absolutely nothing there's like have a scroll bar there because they just can't be ours to fix small things like this um it's just like yeah. one of those it, it's so weird it's it, it fits on no resolution at all either it's just we really have to hope that they're working on a new engine and that the next total war game will be scroll barless no but they, they can just fix that because because they obviously like can you just fit it better? It doesn't even need to be a new engine. Oh, I don't know like if they the, can, though. The Three Kingdoms... so much fucking spaghetti code. Three Kingdoms has a technology tree that has, like, all technologies on one on one screen, and it looks like a tree. It's oh, fantastic. Beautiful. It's really good. It's like, which mm. branch of the tech tree am I supposed to go to? And, you know, people might say, Oh, nerd. You know... Yeah, I can't read what it says on on those things anyway. I have to scroll. I have to mouse over them. It's like you can't say what the hell it's gonna be on the on the other ones. Like one of the dwarven texts are like, uh, what what is it? It's like um, ancestor tombs or something like that, and it gives like something completely unrelated to that. You you have to scroll it over anyway. You have to like just check it with the mouse anyway yeah, and see what's the, what's the extra do. That's the thing that I don't get. Like if you have to mouse over it to see what it does. Why have any text at all? All the text could be like this big. There could be little squares and it's just like a guy with a pickaxe, a guy with a gun, like an armor icon. It could be anything. They don't need Finally, names. someone who understands me. Finally. <laughs> I waited for this. Like the whale who sings its own tune wandering the oceans forever alone. <laughs> My best whale impression. Finally. Roll bars slow down 30%. <laughs> It's insane. I, I don't know. That's my entire, like, I, I hate them so much. I, I hate that I, I bring this up every podcast as well. <laughs> I love it. Plus, uh, yeah, this, they, this they go, we don't want to be negative about Warhammer 3, do we? <laughs> it's getting better. Later, he's, he's into a five-hour rant about. Yeah, but uh, the UIs are better, though. I don't, I don't like this. Um, yeah, it's definitely, well, well, it's definitely improvement. I think it looks really nice in general. All the UI apart from the scroll bar stuff, obviously. You know is, what's uh, UI also got improves? 3D portholes. They have shadows now. Do they? Yeah. I use 2D because I was like, I can't be bothered with them all nodding around all the time. No. Yeah, somebody was like, uh, so somebody tested how much performance actually takes and takes like almost nothing anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. I know some people are like, oh, it's the biggest resource hog, but somebody tested on Redis and they were like, yeah, it takes almost nothing. I, I don't think it really. I, I just like the two D ones to be honest. I just think they're a bit more. Uh, that's fair. Arty. Now they look way better with shadows, though. Way, way better. I can imagine they do. Yeah. Is it just me, by the way? Does Theodore Bruckner look wacky? 
Like, he doesn't... He looks a bit claymation compared to everyone else. Who does? Theodore Brunkner, the Empire hero. Maybe it does. Oh, dude, the um, Dragon Slayers, or whatever they're called, uh, the heroes, they all look like Muppets. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. They look—they literally look like, like a felt Muppets that he put in. Like, they really do. Wait, I'll find a picture. Um, I have to find a picture now. No, they, they are uh, amazing in, in that regard. They, I, I renamed them every single one of them. Like, every, someone in chat, and then it was like, uh, this is like Muppets Kevin. Elmo. <laughs> Oh. You're right there, Yes, Yeah, stiff. Stiff. Just, uh, just in a perpetual cycle of injuring myself at the gym. You know how it is. Same, but I don't go to the gym. Yeah. Keep doing this thing and it, uh, it hurts. So I just kept doing it. And that sounds like the right thing to do, right? <laughs> so I've, I'm like, I'm 40, I don't know, two, three, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. My, for some reason, my shoulder, I've done something to my shoulder. I don't know what it is, but my arm, I can't bend it anymore. It, does, it just hurts all the time. And I don't know what I've done to it. It just has started doing that. I'm like, well, that's broken now. Yeah. My back's, uh, my, and I know why my back's super stiff this morning. It's because it's, uh, it was warm last night, so I wasn't like completely in duvet. And then it went cold during the night. And so my back seized up because it was cold. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh shit, they do as well. It was yeah, the they look like the Muppets. Yeah, right. They're like felt muppets. You can like see how the mouth is go keeps on going as well, right? <laughs> like it's like. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> that looks immense. What's the, what's it's the vulture called. They really do, don't they? Sam yeah. the eagle. There he is. They, they look. They look like the ghost of. Um, Oh yeah, Christmas. Muppets Christmas Carol. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they basically do That's like, I, like, yeah, uh, you know, not 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 a critique, just like an observation. Yeah. Um. So so overall, I think we're all pretty positive about. The yeah. Of delay. I, I accept that Tamakan isn't for me, but overall, I think it's a a good DLC and a good free DLC, which is yeah. to me almost more important. <laughs> Yes. Good. That's that's a nice positive change, isn't it? Yes, it is. No matter what uh, happens down the road, if they're if CA is getting like is back or is changed or like in a positive track, at least this patch will be remembered positively. Yeah. And then we'll just cut to this in like six months when Tor was like, "Okay, that's it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ain't got nothing left. There's one person here. I can't do it." I do, Pharaoh I do is worry. getting a big update as well. Oh yeah. What's getting a bit? Oh, Pharaoh, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even intentional. What? What? Oh, that game. They're getting. Oh, I remember that exists. So they're getting four new factions as a free updates. It's basically like giant, um, like like it's, it's a campaign DLCs that they're just giving away. It's I probably they're just. just uh, that game's dead as well. do, do, does this feel like they're jettisoning Pharaoh? Is this like we sold this thing where we were going to give away a set amount of DLCs? Let's get them the fuck out of here so we can. Shut this shit down. Because that's yeah, kind maybe. of what it feels to me. I mean, they're, they're probably doing a Hail Mary, just hoping that it'll actually, you know, do well, I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm a little bit... It, it just it feels very rushed to me. I don't know why they're bothering. Because, like, it kind of seemed like they'd accepted the game was dead when they uh, they rolled back the, the pricing it, structure. Isn't it? Isn't it because they literally sold, like, a uh, season pass, so now they need to complete the season pass? No, they don't need to do that anymore because they refunded all the season passes. That's what I'm saying. Like, um, if, you've, if you've refunded the season pass, like, surely just drop it. Just, just I, take it out and shoot it in the head, yeah. Uh, I think they're just doing a Hail Mary and thinking, hoping that's going to work. It's like, um, you guys remember when Age of Reckoning, uh, the MMO, uh, just went like, we're not profitable, so we're turning free to play. People like, dummy, then people don't have to pay at all. But like, that actually made them profitable, and then they lost the license for other things. Um, but, um, yeah. Yeah, that worked out really well for Overwatch, I remember. <laughs> Speaking of which, I've, I've been playing it recently because they made all the characters free. And uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you, Overwatch is still fun. Overwatch players are still fucking idiots. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's, that's my Overwatch oh, hour. Hey. And here, oh wait, b big news. 
Heroes of the Storm has a PTR update. No oh, word wow. on, on uh, when that's coming to life, but, you know, Master Chief is going to be coming any minute, you know. Microsoft's going to res it, I just know. I uh, genuinely right. thought that was dead. <sighs> dead? It's, on, it's on maintenance. I don't know why they keep, like, just randomly giving us hopium. <laughs> by being like, PTR update, yeah. guys. It was, like, significant patch notes as well. It's bizarre. Isn't that the same with, um... Oh, it was it, the, the Paradox game. In... Imper Imperator? Imperator. Yeah, Imperator Rome. They just yeah, got fixed like, now because it was like a last fix, wasn't it? That's a nice, nice. Nice that they went back and fixed it. Yeah. Like, I don't know if fix is the right word, but like a, a, a last update that people are like, yeah, th this is, this could be better. And then they just made it better. Respect. It's nice. It's yeah. Good. That's a good change. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why not? Could be the same with uh, Troy, with uh, Pharaoh as well. Hmm. Uh, I'm I'm worried about Pharaoh. I I I didn't dislike Pharaoh. I, yeah. It just didn't it just didn't grab me. I think. No, if you're Bronze Age, then you fall into the total war trap of everything being the goddamn same. It's like, what are you gonna do? Like, oh, the these dudes have cold bishes. They're gonna fight against the dudes with bronze swords. It's like, <laughs> oh, cool. So th this dude is pirates. Yeah, and the other one. Yeah, he has settlements. It's like, okay, that's cool. And the, this one dude has slings and javelins, and the other one has slings and javelins. Um, Slightly different yeah. javelins, though. Yeah, it's a little bit shorter range. Uh, we were careful about the balance, so they do hit a little bit harder, but you have to be much closer. Um, it's not that much harder, but, you know, if you flank, you're going to do a decent chunk of damage. You are Same describing the why one, I have no interest in historical total war. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. that, that's kind of the problem. That, that's kind of the problem with them. So when you do Bronze Age stuff like that, you kind of really fall into that that trap, unfortunately. Oh, is it? Isn't it? I, 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 I just don't know why they've never gone back and done another medieval game because we haven't. I mean, medieval two is a lot, and that's that must be over what ten, twenty. It's, it's just how it is, man. It's uh, why didn't they go back and make another Skyrim? Because it was a culture phenomenon, oh. right? And then, and then they're like, "Yeah, it's gonna, it's it started out, and like at earliest, it's gonna be out like at 2028. That's like 17 years after the first one that became a cultural phenomenon. Everybody the knows what the hell Skyrim is. Yeah, so it's like 17 years after. It's crazy how they how, how some companies do this. Speaking of Skyrim, you know, as the resident uh, Starfield expert podcast, where one of us has played it, Todd Howard has expressed that he knows why the game didn't do well because it was too different from Bethesda." <laughs> Previous titles. You sure about that one, Todd? Yeah, too, many, too many loading screens. They didn't. The other ones didn't have that. They, you could walk dozens of minutes before having a loading screen. I mean, I, I don't. I never really understood why they had so many friggin' loading screens. I mean, back in the day, you can kind of understand. Like when I played Morrowind the first time, my computer wasn't that good. So that, then you had like outdoor cells all the time. So when you moved like yeah. a little bit too far off a tree, a little bit of loading would happen. I would just keep on doing that. So. I mean, like, I, think, I, I can kind of understand, but like now, I, nah. I, th I think the difference is, like, I remember playing Morrowind and just being blown away yeah. that this world existed and I could be in it. Yeah. And I think people now just kind of expect that kind of stuff. So when you do the same thing, but have a load of loading, people are just like, I don't really care about this anymore. Why am I, why am I, I mean, really wasting my time? I mean, back in those days, that was because of technical limitations. Now it's just bad game design where you could, where you just like load into a shop and it's just like one man with a briefcase sitting on a chair like, <laughs> So you carefully put a, a bucket over his head so you can steal his inventory. <laughs> yeah. Incidentally, don't try that in real life. They don't like it. No, they don't. They're like, why don't you deal with that buckets? Yeah. Like nothing. And then apparently I'm all out back in. Yeah. All them librarians. Did, uh, did you see the Helldivers 2 news? Oh, yeah. What a... You have to have a PSN... Um, yeah. PSN accounts to to have it, yeah. but there are certain regions we can't have a PSN account. So a lot of people are just going to refund the game, and hopefully so. Uh, I mean, it's it's come from so big boy Sony rather than uh, Arrowhead, so you know they can't do anything about it. But it's just like such a dumb move for this game. That's kind of well, it took the internet yeah. and the, the world by storm for quite a while. I haven't played it for a little and bit. And I, I was uh, playing today as. Um, 
Instellaris, these uh, these dudes who want to become robots and they're um, religious fanatics about it. And we made it as, as a corporation. Uh, so we were like, anything can be a subscription model, even breathing. All hail the great machine. And kind of like every time a decision came up, it's like, what would a board member do? It's like the worst option always comes up, right? It's like, oh, we have this really popular game. It has a lot of goodwill. We can capitalize on that and make everyone make PSN accounts. And that surely won't piss people off. I don't, I, I just don't, I don't understand. Because like, even if they make a PSN account, what makes you think that they're going to use it for literally anything else? Because like, if you, if you have a PSN, but you don't have a PlayStation because you're playing this game on PC... And I think I think it's one of those things that when you connect them, uh, you make it like a little bit more secure from hackers as well. So maybe that's like a bigger problem that they want to let on. Who knows? Mm, I just I'm I'm very much I haven't played Hell Divers two for a while because I've been so busy, but it does make me go, yeah, maybe I should just uninstall it. Yeah, I played them. Tell you what, I did give Dark Tide another go, and it's not bad. It's not bad these days. It's never that bad. Well, it was never that bad, but the, the class system was kind of ass. But the class system now is like, I've been playing Psyker and they have like some of the coolest shit. I've got a flamethrower. Yeah. I've got, uh, I've got, I've got palp tans. It's great. Yeah. Uh, I was just uh, jumping into a game with with a Psyker and then I heard like the other dude was like, I hate the Psyker auto aim, like, goddamn boomer shits. And I was like, <laughs> that's what I need. Standing there with my auto aim stuff, like, hello. <laughs> I was like, how are you guys? <laughs> My main problem with Dark Tide is that I have to play with other people, and I hate doing that. Thanks. Like, people I don't know. I don't want to just jump into a... Like, you guys would be fine. But other people... People I don't know, I'm just like, I don't I don't really want to Yeah. Do Especially Although for a I game like that where you need fact, to work together. Yeah. I do love the fact that one of the characters on the ship does have, like, a really thick Cornish accent. <laughs> which I do quite like. I enjoy that. Dude, spe no, speaking just... of accents, have you guys ever noticed the Chaos Marauders? They are so funny because it's like Marauder of Siege! That is Marauder of Nurgle! Um, and then like Marauder of Slanesh! And then it's like the corn one, it's like Marauder of Corn! <laughs> <laughs> straight away! <laughs> it's like the weirdest. Just <laughs> straight away with just them. And it's just the Marauder as well. <laughs> <laughs> Every, all the other morons say, are you all right? Yeah, like, <laughs> which region are you from? And they're like, a little bit more uh, to the north. I don't know. <laughs> the Mark of Corn bears many gifts. Some would consider yeah. it to be unnatural. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to think about that next time you, you click on them. Every single marauder goes, marauder of Nurgle. Marauder of Corn. Perfect. Yeah. Next time, next time you play a dwarf faction, just listen to what the demon hunter says at the start of the battle. It's genuinely oh, use the shit out of me. Hang on, well, one one last warmer thing before we probably wrap up because Fred needs to go to bed or eat or something. Yeah. Um, this is I want to get you guys take on this. All right. So the slayer lords and slayer heroes and slayers in general, do you think they should have immortality as a trait? Because it it, it kind of defeats the purpose. I know why they have it from a gameplay perspective, but. You know, since, since games work so, so care so much about the law, it doesn't really make sense that they should be immune to death. Well, a slayer's duty is not to seek death; it is supposed to seek um, the betterment of dwarves in their own doom, essentially. Um, oh yeah, but if, if they die defending the siege and then they come right back, it's, uh, it's bringing shame upon their. If family they can survive, they should survive. That's how Go the Gotrek ghost um, like talks about. Uh, well. Th um, now I'm getting tired, so I'm losing my words. Um, yells at a lot of dwarfs, uh, dwarf slayers about this. That just going out and dying against 800 beastmen is just suicide. It doesn't better. It doesn't do betterment for for dwarfs. Grimnir will not welcome him into his halls. You have to try everything you can, always in every single fight. You cannot at any point be like, "All right, I've done my duty." If you can move at all, even a finger, you have to do this. So if they get like, you know, if they die in a battle and then they just come back and they're like, I survived. Meh. 
you know that's fair dinkum yeah i guess they, they wouldn't they wouldn't if if they were rescued if they were pulled out of the ruins and nursed back to health they wouldn't be like you dick just you should have let me die he'd be like okay great we'll try again next time yeah it's, it's like damn it why 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 <laughs> and then he's like go off to their bed sleep it off again um so, so like yeah the, the the lord definitely like says that that's that's okay if, if you think about it in, in some ways right fair enough if i should ask right let's wrap this one up because uh well like fred just said he's, he's gonna lose his words and we can't afford another sliders rant. It'll, it'll kill him. Don't I mean, don't do it. Yeah, th th thanks. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm all uh, all scroll bar rants ranted out. I want to talk to about like other games we've been playing and stuff like this. Oh boy. Oh yeah. If, if, if you've got it in you. Yeah. I've been I've been playing all kinds. It's been a, it's been a long time. I'm trying to like think what I've played since we yeah, we last the last convened. I I go into like my Steam library and just check like what we've been what I've been uh, playing. Because I've been playing Mana Lords a goddamn ton. <laughs> Rimworld had a DLC since then. Pretty cool. Um, so have you have you tried the the Rimworld DLC? Yeah, uh, slice maths. Because I, the last time I played Rimworld was before any DLC had been brought out. So the other day I actually bought all the DLC. Nice. So I could. And that's a lot of stuff to play through now. It did yeah. cost me like sixty odd quid, but I, I mean, it's 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 a nice game though. I I, I enjoyed it a ton. I am um, I, I um, last time I streamed it, I had like the no, not last time because that last time was the normal one, but one time before that, I had uh, that Twitch chat could could um, vote for stuff and like no interact with this, like oh, the um, right, yeah. yeah the Twitch integration. And everybody used to um, figure out that rats were really, really cheap to spawn in. They just kept on spawning in rats. <laughs> Sad, like, something like five or six hundred rats running around oh on the map. And they would just come into the pantry and eat everything. And it was just, like, try to kill the rats and then, like, eat them. And then, like, they would put the meat there and that would be eaten. And then, like, I couldn't stop the rats, essentially. But I just, like, went ham. My, my character would just, like, like, rat, like... Bash the rats, cause like Charlie, Charlie. Is or something. <laughs> yeah, like I bash thousands of them, <laughs> women, children, entire families, everything. <laughs> and uh, then th they started like doing boomer loops after a couple of hours, and I was like too tired to actually do anything. And they like explode when they die, uh, and then everything burnt down. And um, yeah, that was that was pretty fun. It's like thousands like, of rats eventually, yeah, like like hundreds. Yeah, it was. Um, and what did you think about Manor Lords then? Has that uh, you played this standards? Yeah, it's uh, it's good. There's not a lot to do. Like I heard someone say that you can complete the whole game in four hours. I think if you were speed, like speeding through it as fast as you possibly could, you can. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's early access. Isn't yeah, it? I don't want to like give early access too much uh, goodwill, but definitely like it's a very good foundation to build up from. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's like thirty percent of the game is there. Yeah, it's thirty a, or forty. It's sort of expensive for an early access game with that much content, but I, see, I can see why they're kind of like pricing it for the potential, which is fair enough. Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised by the the fuss it made. Like lots, like it was the most wish list game on Steam. I was a bit like, well, it's, it's I think good. Pe people were overestimating what it was going to be. I think a lot of people, for some reason, expecting a Total War killer because they re mm. released a, a blog post somewhere saying like, guys, this is the combat is not the focus it's a city builder that's very historically accurate with combat features it's not a combat game with city building features combat wise it does remind me a lot of um like the pharaoh and rome city builder games because there you could you could build like a reg you built like a building which was your regiment building and you had a regiment there and you could send them off to go and fight off the map or if enemies arrived on the map they would fight as like a little block it's basically the same thing in Man and Lords. Like the combat's there, but it's not. I mentioned this game like uh, every once in a while, and people forget about it instantly. But there's a game called Songs of Six, which is basically Rimworld uh, meets Man and Lords almost. Yes, yes. Um, and it's uh, finally got like a big reviewer. Um, uh, so that it's, it's like Duis, uh Seth Sinch, and now people might actually know what the hell it is. 
and they're all they're releasing soon i think but that game is like pretty cool actually like if you if you want to support a early access game like that one is is pretty cool i played it for a couple of like i played it years ago and every once in a while again it's a cool game and you get like the really big battles as well like in mm. you know like hundreds or thousands of them yeah you can build like cities in that can't you yeah it's like rim world uh where you build like every single tavern basically like with chairs putting out everything the counter you can copy the room put to build several in the same one like laboratories uh, uh everything everything in, in this um and uh, then you like give them weapons armor and you, you have like these humongous battles eventually mm. as well yeah I've, I've always wanted to get into that i just haven't haven't quite got there yet but my law seems good i just i'm gonna wait until there's a bit more there before yeah. i i had some issues with um i noticed that so I had a I had a charcoal place, and I noticed what they were doing was they would take wood to the charcoal place, and then someone would go and pick up the wood from the charcoal place and take it to the market. Yeah, there's no um, there's no like fine control over where resources go and what no. resources are consumed. Like if you get yeah. if you pick berries and then get a dye maker, whatever they're called, your dye maker will just like consume all of your berries. There's um. In, in Banished, which is obviously like probably the closest game to Man Lords, um, that had a lot of like really great systems where you could like, right, this is, I'm going to set a limit on the amount of food, limit on the amount of, well, any resource. So I think something like that in Man Lords is like mm. a must because otherwise, like you just make infinite dyes, infinite planks, and it's just, yeah, all your yeah, resources are gone. There are some systems where it's like you have to have this much for construction, but like in the end, <clears throat> the problem I think with, with that game is just there, there's like if you play for a day, that's it. That that's yeah. like the con that you get. Yeah. So I'm holding out for more stuff eventually. I'm interested yeah. to see <clears throat> what it becomes. Yeah. I'm 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 sure it's gonna be incredibly good. What is there is really good. It's just mm. not a lot of it. But it was mainly made by one dude. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. It's very polished. Like I think if you look in like the menus and stuff, the menus feel very polished. I've definitely played city builders that are significantly shitter i mean so, uh, i'm gonna give songs of six another like uh talk about it because they're there it's also just one dude basically and he has like the best um developer updates on youtube where he basically is like sitting there vibing and then like finds a bug and then he swears and he's like angry and ranty about stuff <laughs> it's like just one hour game it's it's grace Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, have to, I, I thought I'd actually bought Songs of Six, but I haven't. I've just got the um, the demo. Everspace Two that. also got a free update where they ported from uh, Unreal Engine Four to Unreal Engine Five, which I think is oh. really god and cool, actually. A Dragon's Dogma even came, come out last time we did a podcast. No, it's been it's been a minute because we haven't done one since. Really cool as well. Before I went on holiday, and that was yeah. like much mainly i've been playing valheim though which i have uh wrote my wife into doing as well so we're <laughs> yeah. playing um valheim in the evenings which is really nice is that the oh i think did i yes yeah, the survival viking one it looks is really it cool bit... i have got it i just ain't got anyone to play with <laughs> is it a bit like june spice walls no, not no. really like it's it, it's a little bit different like dune spice wars is just going to be like dune Conan Exiles. Uh, yes, no. I think I did have that, but I, I, ooh, cool. I had an issue with the, for some reason, the, some of the drivers or something, it did not like that. Like, all the, the ground was flashing all the time. I was a good. bit like, I can't really play this. It's kind of. Conan Exiles is a very jank game. I have like yeah. you know, 50 hours in that one, but it's like, you kind of have to roll with it, I guess. Yeah, I've been playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, nice! Because my my child was on a a Star Wars bin. He's almost five, and uh, he for some reason is super into Star Wars now. He didn't like meeting Darth Vader at Disneyland. He was not a fan of that. But no. Oh. But otherwise, he's really he just he's he. The only thing is, he really wants to swing the lightsaber oh, when yeah. I'm trying to do jumping puzzles, which is not that helpful. 
And also, he really just wants a gun. He keeps asking me to pick up the guns from the stormtroopers. And I have to explain to him that no, we're a Jedi. We've got a lightsaber, and he's like, "Yeah, but I want a gun." And I don't know how how well I could control myself about stuff like this. My uh, my four year old daughter came in. And, Dad, do you know who God still is? And I was like, "Don't show her Godzilla <laughs> versus Mecha Godzilla from 1972." It is a good starting point, but she's not ready. <laughs> yes, I do know about Godzilla. <laughs> oh, uh, so so my son super loves C three PO for some reason. I don't know why, mm. but um, I blew his mind when I told him that Darth Vader made C three PO. He was like, "You're, what? you're in real all life." The <laughs> my uh, my wife was was not like much into movies and things like that when she was growing up. So, she, like, when we started dating, or, like, I say started dating, we, we moved in together, like, really, really quickly, but we were watching the movie. And she, like, at some point when we were watching the movie, she's like, no way, the little boy is Darth Vader? <laughs> like, it's so fun to just, like, see that reaction for um, someone for the first time. Bless. Oh, that's, that's adorable. I love that. Uh... Yeah, so other than that, I've I've not really played very much to be honest. I've mostly been playing Total Warhammer because that's all the all the spare time I have at the yeah. moment. Yeah, this, this, this month's been a been a bit of a write off as far as playing stuff. I, I I finished Pacific Drive in there. That is that's a game that is not for everyone, but is very interesting. I've heard a lot of really good things about the writing for that. It's yeah, the story and the mystery is all very do oh hello dog is all very interesting. But like the, just the, it just it's a bit of a grind. Like the car customization is cool, but you just need so much shit because you constantly maintain your car because it constantly gets destroyed, which drains all your resources. So like every run out, you need to just be collecting so much crap, and it's so slow to do. That in the end, I was just like, right, I'm just going to repair this as best I can and get to the end of the story because otherwise, I'm going to get bored and stop playing. Every single goddamn survival game, man. Yeah. Um. Like every single survival game I play now is just like, oh look, and so go collect all that, put it in somewhere, and then you just have to fight the inventory for a bit. Yeah. It's like I can't fit all of this. I have an entire rant about inventories as well, but I'll save that for the next one. What about inventories with scroll bars? Um not many bad ones with scroll bars. Some of them have scroll bars, but they are so immense that I can't really complain about them. I just like, don't like the, the limiting stuff. Like 99% of games that have inventory weights and stuff like that, like don't need them. Like they don't contribute anything. Right. Like, oh yeah, well, it might balance it. It's like, yeah, find another way to balance it. Then I don't give a shit. It's like, don't let me, I, having five minutes to just like goddamn uh, sort through your inventory isn't a good game mechanic. Yeah, that always really annoyed me in Fallout 4 when I was. Yeah. Trying to trying to collect something specific, and then it was like, nah, you, you're carrying too much now. And I was like, having to sort through, sort through that the awful goddamn console inventory system to go. What the fuck do I want to throw out? I used to hate that. I mean, the the best games nobody ever complains about the inventory system. Like Mass Effect One has like in infinite um, uh, inventory space. You can just have as much as you want to. In Baldur's Gate Three, you just have like, you can send anything to your infinite chest at any time as well. It's like. Nobody complains about infinite uh, yeah. inventory ever. I don't know. I just feel like it's one of those gamey things. That everyone's just like, yeah, that's fine. I don't, mm. I don't, I don't, I'm not like, oh, I can carry 500 suits of armor. My immersion is broken. I don't give a shit. I want all those suits of armor. I might, I might wear them later. Yeah, I have a magic bag. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I don't but... care. <laughs> just Mary Poppins bag for every char every game yeah. character. I mean, some games it works. But like, uh, like I'm saying, nine nine percent of games don't need it. Fallout seventy six literally has like a subscription service. If you subscribe to it, you don't have junk oh. weights. Like your junk doesn't cost anything. Like Believable. that's what people pay for. Like why wouldn't you just give that for free to everybody in every game? Because then they can charge people for it. Yeah, but it's like it's clearly something people want, right? It's just showing that people oh, yeah. actually want that. Do yeah. you? You were literally playing. Some some corporate robots in Stellaris. This this is how this works. They <laughs> yeah. always pick the worst option. I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. Got to think of those shareholders. Uh, Got to think of them. Yeah, my, on my on my phone, <laughs> insurance for everything's going up, and I just I was just saying to my panel, like, just think of the shareholders. Come on, might be tough for us, but those guys need it. They deserve it. They work hard. 
Super yachts don't pay for themselves. Exactly. Bastards. Anyway. <laughs> Anyone got anything else? No. No. I don't think so. Thank you, everybody, for yeah, listening. Thank, thank. It's been a, it's been new all DLC. over the place. Yeah. Thank you. New, new a, lot of, a lot of people were asking for this. There was literally dozens, dozens of requests. Yeah, actually, a dozen. <laughs> At least uh, one dozen requests combined across all our channels. Yeah. Multiple requests, like three at least or something yeah it, it took a long lot. while to get this one out but we just felt like there wasn't much to talk about it was, it was we just have bad timing new, yeah we also have a new structure now um well not new structure structure for the podcast but we do have plans for the next one the next one will be recorded in around two weeks or something like that uh it's what we've Whoa, said where's this coming from <laughs> we invited somebody for this as well we have a guest they're sitting there waiting in the goddamn cupboard <laughs> Where they belong, um, oh, and um, yeah, we have like more more stuff to come. We we will be having more, so it, it's not like this long in between because we did say that it it did take too long to make this one. Well, I w I went on holiday, took a week off. Sorry, my bad. So did I. And then the I DLC came out, and then we were like, well, there's no point doing one midway through the DLC because we can't talk about opinions on it and like people's reception. Which speaking of which, everything's very positive. Yeah, one well, three very and, positive. And we did. And we did talk about uh, we we did talk internally as well. Like, should we do one just to talk about the news for Thrones of the K every single time? And, nah, They're like well, we're just gonna rehash so much stuff as well. It's better to just try to have something new every podcast. So we don't just like we're very excited for this one. Malachi looks fun. Malachi was the most fun. Uh, <laughs> we we have all these mechanics. Yeah, we'd hate to talk about I'm... the same thing every episode. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> all right. scroll bars <laughs> Maybe someday uh, someone from CA will will. Yeah, well, the scroll bars might be something we want to look into, uh, or they just add more to spite me. Uh, they can just do that zoom as well. everything in, so now you have to scroll up and across. Oh you can really God. solve. You could solve it just by having like zoom in and out as well. Like it, it's so many things to just solve this. You don't even. Right, folks. That's all. Don't, don't get him started again. <laughs> because <laughs> if we Fred got, carries on, I'm gonna be here for another hour, and nice. uh, I'm way too sweaty. It's got warm in this room. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank Until you. next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.